Happy Friday. It's time for Hands on Mac. This week, we're going to show you all those little fiddly keys you can press at startup. Next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by Roman. Get ED medication discreetly delivered to your front door. Go to GetRoman.com slash H-O-M for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Hey, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time to delve deep into the Macintosh computer. And what I'm about to talk about probably is going to change. I'm going to guess is going to change once the next version of Mac hardware comes out, the the silicon, Apple silicon-based Mac hardware. But some of this stuff has been around since the very earliest Macintosh computer back in 1984. Maybe it'll hang on. These are useful key commands for when you're first starting up. And the most important is the one that people recommend all the time. It's a little bit of a a voodoo two-step to fix Mac problems. And that's the reset parameter RAM command. There is an area of non-volatile storage, storage that persists from boot to boot on your Macintosh called NVRAM. And that NVRAM uh, contains things like what kind of hard drive, what kind of screen, all of the things that, you know, the BIOS uh, CMOS memory has on a PC that's stored in the same kind of place on a Macintosh NVRAM. In the old days, whenever uh, you had a problem with your computer, one of the first things people said is reset the parameter RAM. And actually, this command is easy to remember because it uses a P and an R key. Now, this is a chord. That means you're going to hit all four keys at the same time. So shut down your Mac, turn it on, and almost immediately, you're going to hit the option key, the command key. That's the one with the funny little fan on it. P and R. Option, command, P and R for parameter RAM. You're going to hold it down until you hear a sound. Now, I don't know. Actually, the latest Macs no longer make a bonging sound. So I don't know if this is good. What's going to happen on those? But if you have a Mac that bongs when it starts up, when you command option P, R, you hold it. During startup, it will bong, the screen will go black, it'll in effect reset. And you want to do this if you're doing the voodoo two-step, and I have no idea whether this is required or not, but generally the instructions will say do that a couple of times. So you're going to let it keep holding it, bong, blip, black, bong, blip, black, maybe two or three times. That's <laughs> maybe once is probably enough Then we're talking voodoo here, but that will clear out the parameter RAM. That is something that sometimes actually does help. You'll even see this on Apple support notes, even on modern day Macintoshes. The other one is clearing the SMC. Unfortunately, there's no com command key for that. And clearing SMC uh, on, which I think is a system memory controller on your system, varies from laptops to desktops, if if that is called for or you want to try it as a fix, I remember on my trash can Mac Pro, I had to clear the SMC all the time to get USB working. Um, look it up because usually it's just unplug the machine and plug it in again. You want to stop all power and restart. But sometimes there's a keystroke. Sometimes there's other commands. It's a very weird thing. So those are the two things. It's always good to know. If you are if you meet an old timer, you're talking about Mac troubleshooting, they'll always say, have you cleared the parameter RAM? How about the SMC? That's how you do those. But there are other commands, actually some more modern commands that I think are also very useful. Let's talk about the Mac OS recovery system. This is something relatively recent that I think is fantastic. If you're ever having trouble with your Mac, if you can't boot it, the hard drive, you get the little question mark, blinky, or a sad Mac, try rebooting, holding down the command and the R key. Sometimes on some Macs, it's Command Option R. Sometimes it's Shift Option Command R. But usually Command R is sufficient. What's going to happen is it's going to boot into a special version of the operating system, the recovery, 
and it's going to pull up the recovery mode, uh, and you will then be able to, in some cases, actually not all Macs, but more recent Macs, download the operating system from the network. So if you've got an empty hard drive, you just took out the old drive, put in the new drive, nothing's on it, or if you're having real trouble, this is a very useful key. Command R, once you get into the recovery system, there'll be other options available to you. Um, if you have a firmware password, uh, you're going to have to enter that at this point. And then you'll be able to restore from a time machine backup. You can reinstall Mac OS. You can use disk utility to format the drive. There's a lot of commands in that recovery mode. That's a very useful mode. And I think perhaps one that uh, I should emphasize, if you do time machine backup, this is an opportunity to restore your Mac from that time machine backup. So if, for instance, you get a brand new drive, uh, you want to get it back to the way it was, you've been using Time Machine, Command-R is your friend. That gets you into the recovery system. I mentioned firmware password. I don't recommend doing this, but if you really want your Mac to be secure, there are several levels. I showed you a few episodes ago turning on File Vault. That I recommend. It's an easy thing to do. It's on in the new by default in the newer Macintoshes. Older Macintoshes, you'll find it in the security uh, system preference pane. That scrambles all the data on your hard drive and makes it unusable. But you can make your whole Mac unusable by setting a firmware password on your Macintosh. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I've done it. And it confused. In fact, I did it on a system I later gave my son, and he said, every time I boot up, it wants a password. What's going on? And I said, oh, yeah, that's I set the system firmware password. I was ex experimenting with it. But if you have a laptop and you're worried about it getting stolen, you don't want the thief to use it at all, let alone you know access your data on your hard drive, but you just don't want them to use it at all, you can set a firmware password, which will keep the computer from starting up without that password. Uh, turning it on is a little complicated. You're going to go into that recovery mode we talked about, Command-R, and you'll see it in the utilities menu. You can choose the firmware password utility. Turn it on there. That's going to limit some of the following keys, the keys I'm going to talk about on this episode. Not all of them work if you have a firmware password. And whatever you do, don't forget the firmware password. <laughs> it can really be a problem. So... In my opinion, unless you know you need this, for instance, you lose your laptop a lot or you've got state secrets on there, I think for most people, the firmware password is a bad idea. But I mention it because it is available to you. And that is also in the Command R section, the recovery system. Uh, there's also a startup manager. If you're used to Windows, you know we have a safe mode, a way to start up Windows with minimal... Uh, uh, drivers running, minimal software running. There is a safe mode as well on the Macintosh, and it's the same key, I think, as in the Windows, which is to hold the shift key down during boot. Now, that will be disabled if you have a firmware password. That's one of the keystrokes you can't use. So turn off your Mac, turn it back on, and immediately press and hold the shift key. Once you see the login window, you can log in, you may see a second one. You should see safe boot in the upper right-hand corner of your window. And now you're in a mode much like safe mode on Windows where you have a minimal set of stuff installed. This is a great troubleshooting process because if things that were not working work in safe mode, then you know it's caused by something that's loading later on in the startup process. That'll help you narrow down what it is that's causing these problems. So safe mode is a great feature. That's something relatively recent on the Macintosh. There is a startup manager that I think is one of the best features of the Macintosh. And as far as I remember, this has been around forever. And that's holding down the option key. On some Mac keyboards, it'll say alt on that key. Holding down the alt or option key during startup. That lets you choose what you want to load. If you're using, for instance, boot camp, you hold down the alt key, the option key, and you can choose whether to load Windows or Mac at boot time. Uh, if you have 
bootable external drives or a bootable USB key. That's how you choose to boot from it. So the boot manager, this is one of the great features of the Macintosh, is very easily accessed on the Mac just by holding down the option key on boot up. If you have a firmware password turned on at that point, you will be asked for the password before you can go on. You see the value of that firmware password. It really prevents people, for instance, bad guys from booting to an external disk and then exploring your internal disk. Uh, so again, it's for people who really want to keep their Mac extra secure. Um, there is also a diagnostics utility. This is something relatively recent. Uh, the diagnostic utility can be run in two ways. If you press D on boot up, it'll attempt to run the Apple diagnostics that's already on your hard drive. It's hidden in a special partition. Um, the way to do this is a little weird and tricky. You're going to disconnect everything, all the external drives. The only thing you want is keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Uh, if you need Ethernet, you'll leave that in. Otherwise, you can use the Wi-Fi. And, of course, you don't unplug the power cord. But any external hard drives, anything else, USB uh, ports of any kind, you want to disable all of those. Unplug them all. Uh, shut down your Mac. Turn it on and press and hold the D key. Apple Diagnostics will launch... And it will take a few minutes. You'll see a progress bar, and it's going to look for hardware issues. This is something they sometimes run if you take your Mac uh, to the Apple Store. It'll go through this, checking for obvious issues. Um, it'll see if your Wi-Fi works. You can actually repeat that after it's run once by uh, clicking Run the Test again or pressing Command-R. You can get more information uh, pressing Command G. And once you're done running this test, just click Restart or press the R key to restart it or S key to shut it down. This diagnostic mode is very handy. Now, if you really have a serious problem with your Mac, you may find the diagnostic mode does not load locally. If you instead of just hitting plain old D, hit option D on boot, it actually can load that from the network. Obviously, you have to have a working network connection for this to work, but it will load the Apple Diagnostics utility over the internet. This is another command you can't use with a firmware password. Do you know what a netboot server is? That's the ability to boot up over a network, often used in big businesses or schools. Uh, if your Mac supports network booting, N will start up from a netboot server. Um, or if you want to use the default boot image, an option N instead. That's kind of a specialty. Now, there's a unique one that is I want to spend a little bit of time with. Actually, I'll do a couple more, and then I'll get to, I'll end up with this uh, single user mode because that's going to uh, need uh, additional uh, explanation. On older Macs, I think maybe even more modern Macs, it certainly was a big uh, thing in uh, Firewire Macs, if you reboot holding the T key down, T will put it in target disk mode. That actually turns a Mac into a hard drive. It's a very handy way to copy data off a Mac that's malfunctioning or to use an old Mac to start up a new Mac or vice versa. Holding down the T key and rebooting the machine worked really well in Firewire because it became a Firewire hard drive. Our more modern machines, I think you can use Ethernet to do this as well as a USB. It would work great with Thunderbolt, of course. Uh, and the most modern Macs should work great. That makes the basically this fancy computer, your iMac, your Mac Mini, uh, your Mac laptop, into just the hard drive inside. Very handy for copying data over. There is a, a verbose mode for people who like seeing a lot of stuff go up on the screen. Don't forget, your Macintosh really is a Unix computer. And anybody who's ever had a Linux or Unix box knows that the boot up process is all visible. Text scrolls up very fast on the screen. And if you're quick, you can read it and see what's going on. That actually can be done on a Mac. I turn it on because I'm a geek. I like to see it uh, with a command line utility. But you can do it uh, ad hoc on a one-time basis by pressing Command V on Reboot, holding that down. And then you'll get to do it once. It's fun to see all the stuff starting up. So there's a few of the commands. Now I'm going to talk about the last command, which is single user mode. And this is something that doesn't exist uh, on modern Macs. They stopped doing it, uh, I think, in Mojave. But it, it's a Unix single user mode that's quite interesting and sometimes useful. I've actually used it to fix a Mac that won't boot or recover data. Uh, so you're going to reboot the Mac. 
and you're going to press Command S as it's booting up. Once you're in single user mode, you actually can get a command line that will let you examine bits of the Macintosh. This is really a Unixy a kind of thing to do. Um, you can enter if you know Unix commands. You'll be at the command. You'll be in a terminal in effect, and you can use Unix commands. Typically, these commands are used to modify the boot process, to modify the drive table or the boot manager. <clears throat> it's not something to mess around with. It's something you can't even do on more modern Macs. It's something that Apple has kind of decided, yeah, better to leave this off. It was a pretty hardcore command. But if you've ever used single user mode on a Unix machine or a Linux machine, Apple actually did used to allow that all the way up to OS X Mojave. Um, and so if you have an older Mac and you want to play with that, Command S on boot up and uh, you'll start it up in single user mode. You'll get a terminal and... Be careful, because <laughs> there's a lot of power there. You are root user in that terminal. And as a single user, you can do things that in a multi-user machine you wouldn't be able to. So believe it or not, I mean, there's a lot of stuff hidden under the surface. This is all part of Apple's boot ROMs, uh, and it's it's actually some of it very useful. The, the few that I think you'll use again and again, Command-R, I use all the time, if I ever have trouble with a Macintosh or with a drive, I just want to get to disk utility and check the disk. Command R is very useful. Uh, the shift key for, for safe mode is great for diagnosing problems. And don't forget, if you want to do a little voodoo, do a little chicken dance around your machine, command option PR to reset PRAM. It'll impress the Mac elders. That's it for Hands on Mac. A couple of useful things every Mac user ought to know about, even if you don't do it very often. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Rome. And anyone who's dealt with erectile dysfunction knows how awkward it could be to talk about it in person. Roman connects you with a doctor licensed in your state. You'll get discreet professional care, genuine prescription medication or over-the-counter treatments delivered in unmarked packaging. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time. So if you're struggling with ED, stay home and go to GetRoman.com slash H-O-M for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. GetRoman.com slash H-O-M for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Next week, we're going to do something a little... A little uh, black diamond tip. We're going to take a look at folder actions. Did you know you can trigger Apple script or an automator script or a terminal script uh, on simply copying something into a folder? It's a very useful tool, kind of arcane folder actions next week on Hands on Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. One more twit? Well, you got to check out iOS Today. That's the show where Leo Laporte and I cover everything you need to know about iOS. It's the best apps, the best games, and everything you can do with your iPad, your iPhone, and your Apple Watch, plus car kit and so much more. Twit.tv slash iOS.